Welcome to Talking True, where I have in-depth conversations with mystics, near-death experiences, healers, and people waking up to the truth of who they are. Today, I'm really excited because we have a very amazing, wonderful healer with us today. She's my dear friend, Diane Goldner. I think I've known Diane Goldner for close to 20 years, if not more. And she has the most incredible story to tell about how she became, first of all, she was an investigative journalist. She went from being an investigative journalist to being an energy healer. So Diane, welcome, welcome. It's really great to have you join us today. I am so glad to be here. Okay. Excellent. So do you want to maybe just uh, share a little bit about your story and about how you went from being a journalist to where you are now? So yes, of course. You know, I always like to share this story because um, I was a skeptic. Okay. (laughs) And so, you know, and an investigative journalist. So what happened is I never know exactly where to begin it, but I'll begin really at the beginning, which is that I um, was doing a piece for the New York Times and I profiled a woman who had started a charity called God's Love We Deliver. And she had an incredible story. It was one of these stories everyone in New York read. And I got so many phone calls. It was very inspiring because she was searching for God and wanting to make a difference and really be uplifting to other people. And so she started um, helping people with AIDS, bringing them meals. And it turned into this really huge charity with a lot of socialites on the board and the whole bit, and but bringing wonderful hot meals to people with HIV and AIDS. And after the story ran, uh, and she'd had this amazing spiritual awakening. After the story ran, she called me up She said, Diane, I'd really like you to meet my teacher. And I thought to myself, she said, you know, it's going to change your life. I thought, yeah, right. (laughs) It's like that could happen to her. (laughs) That was a good story. But I thought, wow, that, that would make a really great magazine article, you know, this amazing teacher right upstate in New York, you know, and the teacher was a woman. So I, um, I said I would go you know? And so I went and it was New Year's Day. I'll never forget. And I was kind of hungover. You know, I'd gone to one of these horrible parties that last all night and nothing happens except people get drunk. Okay, (laughs) I was thinking, you know, is that all there is? I mean, these are like the fabulous people. And um, so I went up and I met this teacher. And, you know, when I went before her, I thought to myself, you know, I mean, I mean, Ganga was just chatting away and I could not speak if you had paid me. I just was completely frozen like a deer in the headlights. I didn't understand that was the energy, but um, it was. And um, so anyway, the day went by and I just thought to myself, I cannot write a story about this because these people are just... (laughs) <laughs> They're delivered. <laughs> they think she's got something, you know? Mm. And I i mean, that's where I was. Okay. So, um, and I even received a gift. The teacher gave me this beautiful box of chocolates. And Ganga was like, I was giving them away to her daughter and her daughter's friends. And Ganga had like a meltdown. She's like, you can't give those chocolates away. They're for you. <laughs> she said, you have to go home and put them in the freezer They've got the Shakti in them. I didn't know what Shakti was. She said, and whenever you need a little help, just take a little bite. (laughs) I was like, okay, she's really, but I, you know, I, I did, I went home and I did it, you know, and on the way home, I remember Ganga saying to me, she said, you know, I really think you got it. 
And I was so angry. I just was like, got what? You know, I was so disappointed. I was like promised this. So part of me just really wanted what she had promised. And I felt like I didn't, I wasn't any different. Mm -hmm. Of course, I did, it doesn't happen in an instant, right? You're talking about a huge inner transformation, but I didn't understand any of that. Anyway, after that, I started meditating every single day. And the other thing that happened, I mean, many, many things happened, but I'll, I'll just stay to my story here, mm -hmm. my immediate story. So um, a friend fixed me up on a blind date. So with a nice psychiatrist <laughs> who went on this date and he pulls a book out of his satchel and it's a book on healing. And I'm thinking to myself, again, this is where I was in those days. I thought to myself, oh, my God, this guy should be committed. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. He's a psychiatrist and he should be committed. I mean, I'm eternally grateful to this man. I never had another date with him. It was just for this event. I looked at the book and I was mesmerized. I mean, it was literally like one part of me was like, this couldn't possibly be true. Mm -hmm. And the other part of me was like, oh, my God, if this is true, it's the most amazing scoop. Remember, I'm a journalist. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> and there were pictures of spirit guides. And, uh, you know, it was really like somebody seeing picture, naked people, pictures of naked people for the first time. Do you know what I mean? It was like yes, this yes, yes. revelation. <laughs> and at the same time, I thought this couldn't possibly be true. But I thought, OK, I'm an investigative reporter. I'm going to investigate this. I'm going to get a magazine assignment and find out if this is real. Mm -hmm. So I did. And by the end of the magazine assignment, I thought to myself, holy moly, <laughs> this is real. And if it's real, there must be some science that kind of supports it. And I'm going to investigate that and how these people do that. <laughs> and so that's what I did. And the book took about five years. And I was interviewing all the top healers at the time who were teaching and sitting in on all the classes. And every time they would say they could do this or that, I would try it because I thought that couldn't possibly be true. <laughs> and every time it was true, I could do the same thing. And I was just like, and it was for me, it was so easy. I couldn't even believe it. And um, anyway, so that went on. My book came out. I was um, very eager to go back to a, a nice, cushy magazine job. Writing a book was very wonderful, but exhausting mm -hmm. <laughs> and intense, you know. Yes. And um, <clears throat> I remember saying to a friend, it's just going to be like 10 magazine articles. And he laughed his head off. Okay. <laughs> So anyway, so that's, um, you know, so I was looking for a job. Meanwhile, I was going on the radio talking about my book and people would always ask for a healing, you know, where could they find me? And I went to Canyon Ranch to give a book talk. And again, I, and I did a demo, not because I was a healer, but just, you know, just because I was there <laughs> and people were like calling me in my room and talking to me at 6 a.m. on the morning walk and I'd be like, I'm a journalist. I'm not a healer. And, <laughs> and I'd go on interviews for a job and the editor would start telling me what was going on in their personal life and burst into tears. And I thought, oh, I'm not going to get this job. <laughs> so anyway, that went on for a while. And eventually I realized um, one door was literally locked the door to my journalism life <laughs> and the other door was wide open. Mm -hmm. And if I wanted to, um, that I needed to go, I needed to follow the path that was set before me. It was really hard. I mean, now I'm so grateful because I love what I do. I love being a journalist, but what I do now fits so much more of me, mm -hmm. but it was, um, I went kicking and screaming. I hate to say it, but it's true. <laughs> yes. And you, didn't you say that you cried or you cried through frustration or whatever? Oh, you know, the first few years of my meditation, I hate to say it, uh, and my healings, because I've had more healings than anyone on the planet, probably. <laughs> um, I was really, an, I still am an energy junkie. Um, 
So, um, you know, there was, there's just so much stuff that we're not even aware is in there. Um, and it all has to leave, you know, the higher you go vibrationally, all these things are going to leave you. It's not always a gentle process. Right. Yeah. So well, yeah, plenty of tears. <laughs> yes. So you did, you then went, when you realized journalism was done, you, did you do any trainings with anybody? How, how did that kind of Well, work? I'd been training the whole time. And there was one healer that um, <clears throat> was studying with Barbara Brennan, um, Gerda Swearingen, who I consider my first mentor. And I remember when she, I was, you know, sitting in on a course and she asked a question and I didn't think in these terms or didn't understand, I thought in these terms, but when she spoke, that whole question just lit up. I thought, oh, my God, this is somebody I have to talk to. Mm -hmm. And she very gently, whenever I would ask her something, she would turn it around. So if I would say, oh, what are you seeing? Because I didn't think I could see anything psychically, clairvoyantly. She would ask me what I was seeing and be like, oh, no, I can't do that. And she would, <laughs> <laughs> and she would persist and insist and teach me. And um, so, you know, she was my really my first mentor, in addition to all these courses I was taking. And then I started doing exchanges with people I was meeting and I was taking, I took a lot of courses. And um, so I've never stopped. Um, you know, it's an ongoing process. The most important thing about being a healer is healing yourself. You know, in the beginning, I thought it might be where you put your hands. You know, it's like, okay, it's where they put their hands. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and then you do long distance healings and you realize no hands, mom. <laughs> so it's it's your level of um, focus and consciousness and intention and the clarity and the, you know, I, I make the analogy um, of, you know, regular light is, has a lot of different random direction. <clears throat> and when I do my healings, it's like the laser light. It's totally, I'm totally focused. Now a laser can cut through steel because all the light um, is going in one direction. There's no randomness to it. It's all mm -hmm. focused. So I've lost my train of thought, but basically, <laughs> um, you know, my training was all the classes and a lot of work with inner work um, that I've, I've never stopped doing. Mm -hmm. And, and <laughs> yes, and, and today you work with people across the globe, right? Yes, I, I see people in person in Los Angeles and I, you know, I have people call me from Singapore and Japan, Australia, Europe. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So do you want to just kind of share a little bit with yeah. um, viewers what that would look like? If somebody reached out to you, let's say online, what does that look like? Yeah, I mean, you know, maybe I should share some stories first and then. Oh, yes, that would be good. Yeah, and yes. then people have an idea of what um, healing can do. Because, you know, you know, healing at the most basic level is going to make someone feel just calmer. And that's much more important than people realize, but I can go in and um, I once had an Olympic athlete call me on the eve of the games. And this person had um, fractured some bones in the foot. I want to be careful so I don't identify this. Yes, 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 yes. And uh, so they were going to be sidelined, uh, benched after all those years of work. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> and her physical therapist told me to call her, told her physical, both told her to call me. So I did. And I did maybe two or three healings in rapid succession. I was in, I was living in New York at the time. I think I can't even No, Maybe I was in LA and, um, this person was in, um, somewhere else. <laughs> And I did those healings and they were able to participate in the Olympics and won gold and m multiple medals for the team and individually. Wow. wow. So 
Yeah. Um, so, you know, and I never know what's going to happen. I can never promise that result, but I feel like the energy always brings mm -hmm. things to a higher order. Mm -hmm. And you never know what exactly you might think, you know, what that's going to look like, but we don't know. So sometimes it might be helping somebody get pregnant. It might be helping somebody resolve cancer, but again, I can't promise that. So when somebody calls me, you know, I, we would set up a time. I might ask them what their focus is in advance, um, just so I can think about it a little bit. And um, when we have this session, I would ask questions around what was going on, what's going on in that person's life. It's not, I just went to the doctor the other day and, you know, she took all the blood work and all of this. She did not ask me a single question about myself. I was just like, yeah. I couldn't believe it. So when somebody comes for healing, I want to know who they are because things aren't happening in isolation. They are usually um, have something to do with um, your um, life. And maybe what you need to know or do, it's kind of guidance from your soul. Your body is speaking to you. And uh, so what's going on in their life is very relevant. Often uh, something, they're sick, there might have been a precipitating event, something a year or two earlier. And so I ask about that. And, um, and then um, I have that person lie down and relax. <laughs> eyes and I work with their energy system. So that could be in person or long distance. It really doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. and, which I know is, uh, that was one of the things when I was a journalist, I thought, yeah, that, and you can sell me the Brooklyn bridge, but <laughs> <laughs> I bought the book of bridge. <laughs> so um, it's really amazing at first when you have a, a long distance healing because I've had them and I've I've given them and I've received them and either way people feel the energy and it's just uh, amazing it's you know you really realize there's other dimensions to who we are and um and so you know, at the end, after I've run the energy, I would talk to a person about what's going on. And I usually say it takes about a week for everything to integrate. Now that can sometimes be shorter or longer, but that's how, you know, I, that's a guesstimate. Mm -hmm. So I had, I worked with one woman, this was years ago, who um, was seven or eight months pregnant at the time, I think seven months. And, um, you know, and during the session, I remember I asked her, did you have a C-section? Cause she'd had a child earlier. And she said, no, anyway. So two months later, when she gave birth, she said they were about to give her a C-section. And all of a sudden the room just filled with light. And I can't even remember the details, but she was able to give birth naturally. And she knew that it had something to do with the healing. So that's mm -hmm. a longer arc, right? <laughs> so you never know. Yeah. Yeah, that's really incredible. I mean, having had healings with you in person and long distance, they really are profound. And and the fact that you have built a, an incredible business, you know, healing business over the years is a testimony. Um, to the way you work and what you have to offer it's really remarkable <laughs> and you've also you've also written books about uh, you know the whole story right I think yes, yes. do you want me to talk about them and show yes. I, have, I have them here because I'm a proud mama <laughs> okay so this is the first one and this is the one if you want to know about the science you would read this my, when I came out with this book, my mom was like, maybe if you had left out the science, you would have had a bestseller. <laughs> wow. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, you know, I was in a place I really, by the time I put all the science together, I didn't need it because I knew the healings work, but it really helped me anyway to understand that it is completely, it is really complete. I joke, but I like to say that I'm doing 25th century medicine yes. <laughs> because one day we will understand the science behind it. I, I feel like I do. 
Um, and it has to do with the quantum dimension. Um, so the healings are affecting like the subatomic particles and, you know, all kinds of things on another dimension of reality, but it is real, you know? Yes. So anyway, so that's the first book. Um, and there's a lot about how healers work and things like that. And then these two books came out almost at the same time. So yes, you can heal and awakening to the light. And this was going to be a trilogy, but I had a baby. <laughs> 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 and, uh, who's your godson <laughs> anyway, yes. this is really about how I became a healer so the story I told in the beginning is in here and a lot of different early experiences with energy and then this one is case studies and different guided meditations people can do so the case studies are help you to understand how you could think about what's going on in your own life and your own body and how to heal it and then the meditations are, you know, will help you do that. So. Uh, yeah, I, thanks for that. So, uh, you know, the thing that I would say as well is, and I found it through my own books, is that these books are vehicles for the awakening power or the Shakti or whatever you want to call it. So I'm sure you've had responses from readers that, that validate that. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, people um, will find me through my books they'll read my books and then they'll think, wow, I want to have a healing. Mm -hmm. um, and I do think um, they, I, actually they're all um, awakening because, you know, they're all bringing you into this other dimension that is, as you know, <laughs> not only real, but more fundamental. So, um, you know, I liken the healings to when you go into, let's say you have, you've print, you have a big work project and you print out your document and lo and behold, the page numbers are wrong or, you know, the chapter heading or there's a typo somewhere or all of the above. And you think, oh my God. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, okay. You could go get the white out and you could white out the problem and t write in something or you know, whatever, even if your handwriting's neat, it's never going to look great. No. Perfect. No, but if you go back into the computer, into the matrix, right, and just press a few buttons and change the ones and the zeros somewhere <laughs> in some other dimension, you can print it out and it's going to look perfect. Yeah. And so I, I feel that that's what I'm doing when I do a healing. Yes. And also um, helping, because I know I know from direct experience and also from yeah. what you've shared, um, helping people see the root cause of the problem rather than just trying to kind of heal it fast or, you know, get rid of it or whatever, whatever we're accustomed to through orth orthodox medicine. It's so, you know, I, I really it's when you're when you're sick, when you're not feeling well or when something, you know, because I do work on some non-physical things, too. When things aren't going the way you want them to, it sucks. There's no mm -hmm. question. <laughs> We've been there, right? You know, yeah. <laughs> um, but it's part of your process of growth. And I remember, you know, very early when I was reporting, you know, my first book and I had an earache and I went to the doctor and prescribed an antibiotic and it didn't get better. And they prescribed a second antibiotic and it didn't get better. And Gerda, my first, you know, mentor, she was like, she was like, Diane, she said, what is it that you don't want to hear? I was like, so ridiculous. <laughs> It's yeah. so annoying, you know what I mean? And um, so I'm sure people get annoyed with me too, you know. Um, and But I got off the phone with her and I thought, what is it? I thought yeah. about it. And it came to me. And you know what? The third antibiotic worked as soon as I got the answer that the antibiotic worked. Yes, yes. Because it, it's not about throwing out orthodox medicine and not going to see the doctor, but it's about using the energy medicine in tandem you know if you need to go see a doctor yeah. that's great you know the really looking at the core the root cause is going to be the kind of the fastest most expedient way of, of seeing what you need to see hearing what you need to hear and and working with it energetically it allows yeah. medicine to work sometimes the medicine won't work unless you're i mean sometimes it will mm -hmm. yes sometimes it doesn't 
Yes. And also, you know, the thing that I found is that it's really empowering to know that you can do that work from from the get go. You know, now, I mean, for years now, you know, whenever I get a headache, for example, or ear infection, whatever the story is, you know, I go straight to, okay, what am I supposed to learn from this? What are you here to teach me? You know, and then you can figure out what do you need to do to take care of it. And uh, and it's great. It's because it gives you a way to move forward in your life and, and, and take your, um, you know, like, let's say you need to stand up for yourself at work or something and you're not doing it. And, you know, so you have whatever the problem is until you do that, maybe a sore throat because you can't speak up or, you know, whatever it is, but um, it can be hard work. Yes. You yes. know, so. Yeah. You know, it's nice when it happens really fast, but, you know, there is some situation. And I, I've worked with people who obviously have been sick a long time sometimes. And the answers aren't so simple. You yeah. know, sometimes it's a a, um, a bunch of different knots that you have to unravel. So I have a lot of compassion. Yeah. Yes. Because it's never it's never easy if it's been if it's a long term condition. And the thing is, it's hard to do it completely. We can sometimes, but even sometimes it's helpful to talk to another person, you know. Um, But um, it's hard to do all of this on your own because it's right where you can't see things that you, you know, and if somebody else can see it with you, that can really save you a lot of time and pain and suffering (laughs) yes exactly and also um you you don't just work with people who have health complaints let's put it like that right you can help people kind of unblock creative issues and i'm going to give i'm going to give one example because i think this would be very helpful um i forget what year it was but it was uh it during one of your early visits to to visit you know tony and i when we're on grand bahama And you said to me, oh, I, you were there writing up your newsletter. And you said, oh, I could do with some images to go in my newsletter. Do you have any? Have you got any of your paintings? And I said, yeah, actually, yes. I, yes, you know. So anyway, I, I let you have two or three or four of them. And you, you use them to illustrate your newsletter. Um, and then you told me that there was really some great feedback about the images and then that, the kind of the opening of that and the revelation of that and the feedback from that then led me via you, via your prompting to create um, an account on Fine Art America and to make my artwork available and all of those things. I don't think and I ever it, knew that. <laughs> yes, yeah, so it had this huge knock on effect. And I remember having a conversation with you when you were, you were saying, you know, there's been such great feedback, you should really, you know, make your work available outside of the Bahamas. And I was saying to you, well, it, I don't do that because it's so incredibly expensive to send paintings you know, out of out of the Bahamas. It costs a hundred dollars or so. And you said, well, you know, maybe look online, you know. And then literally within, <laughs> I'm not joking, within less than 24 hours, this notification when I was online, came up about Fine Art America, which I'd never even wow. heard of. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> so, no, I'm so glad you shared that. I just, I know this is going to, you know, I say things in the moment, it's really clear to me, and then I totally, it's gone. I don't remember it the next day. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I do the same. The yeah. other thing that I'm going to share Beautiful. that's really, yeah. really well worth sharing is with respect to being prompted when I, I never wanted to be an author or never I'd never imagined in a million years I'd be here hosting a YouTube channel because <laughs> you know I've always been a contemplative and all of those things yes, so I, I get it. <laughs> you know you know so um but you said to me some years ago you just got when when I was prompted to start doing this work and to do healing to uh, do energy readings and stuff like that and sole purpose readings you just yeah you just turned to me and you said Julie you've just got to do it you've just got to let it rip (laughs) because you're one of the most talented people I know I mean you're just amazing you know like having a reading from you which I've had (laughs) can be life-changing you know so it was that just let it rip that just landed in me and it was landed like this like 
um, almighty explosion. And I knew that he was saying was <laughs> absolutely true. I didn't have a clue. And then, of course, again, within 24 hours, I got an email from a, a client who t sent me this kind of um, platform that she was using to create her website, which was, uh, I forget, web was it Website Builder? or Anyway, I forget the name of it. Site Builder, Site Builder. So uh, I was like, holy moly, here it is. You know, and I just signed up, had three months free sign up, and then I was good to go. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> but it would never have happened. If you hadn't said to me, Sh you have to do it, Julie, just let it rip. Oh. It was so like... <laughs> I'm really honored to hear this. I'm just like thrilled. You know, I want to say something because everyone can do this. Everyone can, um, you know, I always hold an intention and I know you do too, yes. you know, to offer the highest you can. And so, you know, if I borrowed your art, I of course wanted to do anything I could as a thank you. Right. You yes, know, yes. So, um, but also I, you know, I, I, you know, as I said, I don't even remember that conversation, but I'm sure I was so delighted to have such beautiful art and, you know, the response, you know, I knew was very special. Um, so that's really interesting. I don't know if I can share a story about you. Cause yes, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> now that we're sharing stories. Cause, um, okay. So I was, um, we were both living in an ashram together, um, and I was about to leave and I had some pressing personal questions that um, never seemed to get resolved. <laughs> and I remember I wrote my questions and I placed them in a box for um, my meditation teacher. You know, not that she necessarily always would read it, but anyway, um, it, it still gets because it comes immediately to that person. Um, but anyway, I wrote my questions and one of my requests that it, I would get a very specific answer. And you and I didn't even know, we, we knew each other and we hung out, but we didn't actually talk about personal things. We talked about our psychic experiences, healing, you know, having people visit us from other dimensions, <laughs> things like <Yes>. that. <laughs> and um I went into the lunchroom to have lunch, not even a half an hour after I wrote this letter. And you came over to me. Do you remember this? Yes, um, I do. Very well. And you answered every point in my letter as if you had just read my letter. It was just the most astonishing thing. And I burst into tears. Yes. And um, it was just like, I had asked for like, I was like, I need concrete answers. And there you were giving me blow by blow. It was everything I had written in my letter. It was just amazing. And everything you said helped so much and um, came to pass. I mean, one of my questions at the time was whether I was going to get married or whether I had to surrender that. Of course, now I'm divorced. But <laughs> it, was a, it, was a, it was a beautiful process getting married and the whole thing. So, um, yeah, it was just yeah. phenomenal. Yes. Yes. You know, and the, the great thing about what we're sharing now, it, uh, it's, it's all about giving testimony to the truth that when we're given gifts, it's really important to stand behind them and to share them appropriately, right. When the time is right and all of those things and to really, um, value what we've been given because it would have been so easy for me to not say anything because I remember when I asked you, can I join you, you know, for lunch and sat, I sat down immediately, I got this download and I asked the question, is it okay to tell Diane this? Because it's kind of personal. And I waited till I got permission and then I shared it all, but I could easily have just swallowed it and not, you know, and thought, oh, and then debated and said, no, 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 no. But, yeah. but it's, really important um, to be able to stand behind to own and then to to share when the time is right. That is such a profound thing you're saying, because um, that really affects me even now, you know, because, um, you know, obviously when I was being pushed to become a healer and didn't want to do it, right, um, you know, I was thinking of me, <laughs> Yes. Not not how I could serve, right? Um, it was too scary. 
I mean, obviously I got over that, but um, it is true that we need to share our gifts. And I also tend to sometimes um, <clears throat> you know, just want to be quiet, stay in my own, you know, I've written my book. So obviously something's out there, but you know, I don't, I usually, if somebody doesn't ask, I don't say anything. So maybe I need to rethink that too sometimes. Yes. Yeah. Because what I've noticed that it, even when I go to the food store, for example, and I don't know the, the checkout girl or guy or whatever, I'll sometimes get a message to say something, you know, and it might be just, it might be, how's your day going? How, you know, um, when do you get off or whatever, but it might be something a bit more specific and personal. And I've really learned to listen to that and to trust that because that little seed of something might be enough to make that person take a leap of faith or to mm. trust what they're receiving as well. So it can be quite, it can be quite subtle, but it, it, it can also be really profound, you know, just a, a few I feel words. Like saying that to me today is very profound. That's what I want to say. I feel like I'm getting um, a real affirmation on some projects I'm working on so, yes yes yeah yeah, yeah. and it, the, these are all calls to action that we get all the time but oftentimes it's easy just to diminish or deny that or doubt it or whatever <laughs> I hope everyone is really listening to this, <laughs> this a, I mean this is the amazing thing about being with you it's it's really a um an offering and a healing for for everyone all of you and I and everyone who's with us. Yeah. yeah, because I'm sure you do the same thing before I before I do any one on one session or any group work or any interview or whatever I'm doing online. I always do puja. I go to my altar. I invoke the great beings that I work with. I ask for this to be a vehicle for the awakening power and for people to receive healing and whatever they need to take away for them to be able to stand in the truth of who they are. And it's it's always, always really powerful. And it's unfailing. The effect of it is always, always really um, spot on. It really works. Yes. I I do my own version in the sense when I, anytime I start a healing, I, I you know, bring in lots of high beings. <laughs> I would never want to do it all on my own. <laughs> no, no. And, you know, it's a great way. What happens that doing that then is the personal eye gets out of the way and it's a, it's a supreme self or source itself or whatever you want to term that, which is can, cannot be spoken about really, I suppose you could put it like that, or God. Um, it's that that does the work. And um, it's that's when this incredible magic happens. And you know, one of the hardest things about going from being a journalist to a healer was, um, I mean, part of the whole transition was that, you know, as a journalist, what I had as a healer, I want to say in a certain way, the less I do, <laughs> the more I can accomplish. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that's that's the obvious that's the inverse of what we're taught and what I was doing for most of my life. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, so it's not that I'm not doing anything, I'm there. And so my presence is very important, but at the same time, um, um, you know, offering to be of service and to um, you know be the point person, so to speak. Yes. Yes. It's being about, it's, it's about being empty enough to allow grace to work through you yep. and to let it do whatever it, ha it has to do. And, um, and also, you know, part of that too is, is rec we're receiving as well while we're doing that work too, right? It's, it's so incredible. I, whenever I come off a session or an interview or anything, I just feel really amazing. <laughs> just, I never feel drained at all. Yeah. No. It's, it's just absolutely incredible. And um, it's a gift. I, I feel very, very blessed to be able to do this work. It's really incredible. Me too. Me too. Mm. Sure. Yeah.
So I think maybe that's that's the the end of this first episode. We can okay. certainly have this conversation. We can have a few ongoing conversations about I'm healing so and the stories and all of those things. Um, but before we go, do you want to just tell people where they can find you, Diane? Yes, I want to. I want to do two things. I want to say one thing, which is, um, and we can talk more about this. But I just want to add one thought, which is that one of the things I love about healing and all this work is that um, there's it. Op- it opens the door to understanding the universe in a completely different way. Yes. Um, and um, I can be reached at diannegoldner.com. I try to make it easy. Or Diane at diannegoldner.com. <laughs> I'm laughing. <laughs> but anyway, that's how you can reach me. And and your books are on Amazon, correct? My books are on Amazon. Fantastic. Well, Diane, thank you so much for joining me today. This has been absolutely amazing. I've loved every minute. And I, I feel blessed. You know, I feel like I've received I this do too. I feel like I received um, a reading <laughs> right here and now. And um, oh, my God, so much Shakti. It's beautiful. Yes. Thank you so much, Julie. It was really a delight, a pleasure. You're, you're so welcome. And um, <laughs> I want to send love to everyone. You know, yes. everyone who's with us. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you. And thank you, everybody, for joining us today on Talking True. As always, I really appreciate you being here. If you enjoyed the content, then let people know. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. That would be really great. So that's all from me and all from Diane for today. Take it easy. Be well. And bye for now.